um, regarding the proposed increase for health insurance premiums this year and to give you a brief comparison of where we would have been had we stayed with our old plans just for kind of um, some clarity. And then I will come up when she's finished to kind of let you know how we plan to fund the increase. So I'll turn it over to Stacy. Thank you. Good evening. Um, it's nice to see you all tonight. I'm very happy to be out on the road today. It's my first time since March. <laughs> so um, anyway, I'm Stacy Comachero and I am with Keenan and Associates. I have been working with the um, city of Lemoore since they joined the PACE JPA. And I am going to go ahead and go through the 2021 renewal overview. Um, and I understand you all have a copy of that up on your screen. So what I'm going to start with the agenda is we're going to talk about the. Um, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> a little technically challenged too. Um, so what we're going to start with, I'm going to go over the pace renewal that the city just got, the PACE Kaiser renewal, so Anthem and Kaiser, the current PACE benefits. I'm going to do the uh, CalPERS versus PACE exhibits. I'm going to take a look at uh, the 2020 medical marketing highlights, uh, just basically to show that we have gone out to market to see what else is available for the city of Lemoore. We did do that in 2020. Um, and then we have the dental and vision renewals along with the life and ad and renewal. Okay. So here we have our PACE, Anthem, and Kaiser renewals. The city currently offers three different Anthem plans. We have an EPO 15, an EPO 25, a PPO 500, and then the Kaiser HMO plan. An EPO plan is basically, um, it looks like an HMO in the sense that it has just low uh, office visit copays, but you do not have to assign yourself to a medical facility and you get to use the entire Anthem PPO network. So there's a lot of freedom in this plan. Uh, you can see that the EPO 15, the subs, that is the number of employees that are on each one of these plans. So the EPO 15 is the richest plan the city offers, and it is the one that the majority of the employees are on. And then we have the EPO 25, the PPO, and then the Kaiser. Down below, you will see that our renewal increase this year was 8.75%. Um, I will tell you that groups of the city size, if you were out on your own, your renewal would be closer to 10 to 12% on a regular basis. Okay. Uh, PACE did pull away from the Monterey County Schools Insurance Group effective 2020. So PACE now is made up of just municipalities. There's about 28 municipalities in our pool. And when we left what I called McSig, that was the larger JPA, when we left the JPA, we did have a claims responsibility, which we're calling the um, deficit recoupment. We had incurred claims while we were in there in that JPA. So we're responsible for still paying part of it. The 8.75% increase includes 3% of that deficit recoupment. And the reason I really want to point that out is PACE as a whole would have had a 6.1, 6.2% increase this year, which is really good for our PACE JPA. I mean, no increases, I get it. No increases are great, but that's below trend. Um, trend is typically about 8%. Okay. On the next page, that is the um, benefit comparison. You'll see the PPO 500 ha does have in-network reimbursement and it has out-of-network. So you have the freedom of choice. You can use any PPO provider and you get a higher, um, higher benefit, less out-of-pocket cost to you. But you can use out-of-network providers. You'll just end up paying more money for those out-of-network providers. The EPO um, 15 and 25, as I mentioned, they do use the full PPO network, but there are no benefits outside of the network other than cases of emergencies. And then of course we have the Kaiser plan, which has very little enrollment um, right now, probably due to location. So you have two people on Kaiser. So this is just showing you what is covered and what are the out-of-pocket costs to, your, uh, to the city employees. Questions on the renewal, the PACE renewal as is? Okay. 
So then I'm going to go to the 2021 Pace and CalPERS exhibits. Um, the city pulled out of CalPERS and entered Pace, I think, three years ago, 2017, but three years ago. And um, what I want to point out in the the uh, Pace versus CalPERS or what you look at when you're comparing plants. If you're going out to market and you want to say, well, I want something that costs less, um, then the things that we always have to look at are what is the actual rate and the rate itself, not necessarily the percentage increase. Because I'll show you on, a, on another exhibit here that the CalPERS average increase is lower than our Pace average for the four years. However, the rates are very similar and in some cases you have better rates with Pace than you do with CalPERS. So we always wanna look at the rate as well. Um, and then you wanna look at the plan design and the plan design being what are the employees paying for services? Out of pocket maximums, that is the most that anybody would pay in a given year before their benefits are covered at 100%. You wanna look at whether or not the plans that you're um, considering have either a full network or a limited network. Limited networks are less expensive but um, less doctors to choose from. We look at the availability of network providers. Uh, you know, if in an HMO scenario, how many how many facilities do you have have to choose from when you're in an HMO plan? Out of network reimbursement comes in play when you're working with a PPO plan. A lot of times, those are based on a um, negotiated fee schedule. So when people are using out of network <coughs> providers, it can be um, pretty shocking at the bill that you get for the balance billing. And then, of course, any additional fees or liabilities with, with CalPERS, you have a retiree liability. Okay. So then we have our four-year average increase in PACE uh, since 2017. We do have an average of 10.1%. Uh, we had a 13.9% increase one year. There was there's a lot of high claims. We had a large agency in the Mixig pool, because we were in Mixig at that time, and there were significant um, claims involved with that one, along with just our regular group claims. That agency is no longer in pace. Um, and so we came back down to 8.9 and then 8.75%. So our average over the time frame has been 10.1 for Anthem plan. Mm -hmm. The next one with the four-year average increase for CalPERS, um, as I mentioned, you might see a lower percentage, and you will with PPO plans, PERS Choice, and PERS Select. Um, they had an average, well, PERS Choice had an average of 2.4, and then you have a decrease in the PERS Select. Um, and I think when PERS comes out and releases the renewals, we also hear about the fact that they do, they, they have the ability to move funds around to make, you know, one plan less expensive than another, and so on. Um, and then you've got your Blue Shield HMO, HealthNet, Kaiser, United Healthcare. United Healthcare was the plan that the majority of the city employees were on when you guys entered PACE. Okay. On slide nine, I put this one together because again, I wanted to point out rate rates, you know, actual rates. If you look at the PACE Anthem EPO 15 plan, at $827, it's less than the Blue Shield Access Plus HMO with a, a wider, um, you know, it, you've got a bigger network to choose from than you would, and it would still cost you less in premium. And then your PPO um, Purse Choice is a full network plan. Yeah, Purse Select is a, is a limited network. But this, again, I just want to point out that rates are important, not necessarily average increases. On slide 10, these were just a couple samples that we put together, the next three slides, 10, 11, and 12. And what they show you, I'll just go over the first one here, was an emergency room claim. And you can see the PACE EPO plan, and I just wanna go down to the bottom, where this is um, an in-network emergency room visit. And you can see that the employee would have paid $170 out, out of their pockets and the annual premium would have been $99.27. If they had been on the PERS Choice Plan, it would have cost that employee $842 out of their pocket. And the, the savings is not, it's, the premium would have been $9,398. So not a big, huge savings in the, um, in the premium versus what the employee is actually gonna pay out of their own pocket. Okay. 
The next one is a maternity claim, again, with the EPO 15 versus a PERS choice PPO plan. And again, less out-of-pocket costs for the PACE member. And then the last one is a diabetes claim with the EPO 25 versus a PERS choice PPO. Okay. Can you go back to that last slide real quick? Uh-huh. The yeah. diabetic claim? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to kind of look in companies. That's okay. So in this scenario, on the EPO 25, the employee would have paid $305 out of pocket and an annual premium of $96.78. Okay. okay. All right. In 2020, like I said, we did go out to market. Um, the city wanted to, you know, make sure that they were in the right space and and what is available outside the marketplace. Anthem Direct and Blue Shield are pretty much the two carriers that are available down here. Um, United Healthcare does not go down to this size group and Aetna um, declined to quote at that time. Aetna periodically tells us they're gonna be competitive and ask to you know, provide proposals for our clients, but we haven't seen one yet. <laughs> so um, we did quote a PPO and HMO option with Anthem Direct. Anthem would limit the city to two plans. Uh, there was a reduced premium available as long as one of the plans offered was an HMO. And as I mentioned uh, originally, there are uh, uh, groups of this size between about 100 and 300 lives, both with Anthem Direct and with Blue Shield, they go into a pool of similar size groups. And I can tell you, I have Blue Shield groups and I have Anthem groups, and I will always get a 12%, 12.9% or 11.9% renewal. That's typically what their pools come out at. I can tell you I have another Central Valley city right now of similar size, I just got a 17% increase because they're on their own. So, and that's with Anthem. Um, and that's just typical of, of what we see. Blue Shield is always 12.9 every year. So we quoted um, both Anthem and Blue Shield, again, PPO and HMO options. Blue Shield would allow three different plans. And in the same scenario with the Anthem, if you put an HMO alongside of it, you will reduce your total premium cost. Neither of those carriers at the time had an EPO option, which I think you're, the employees of the city have really liked having, I believe is what I've been told. So the, um, on page 15, this is just a total of what your premiums would have been. And had you gone with Anthem Direct in this first scenario here, the increase in premium would have been $420,000 a year over what the PACE plans were. If you go to um, 16, slide 16, there is some reduction in premium costs, but again, you'd have to go to the HMO. Um, depending on where people live, would determine how many HMO facilities are actually available for somebody. And again, with an HMO, you have to assign yourself to a facility and they have to direct your care. So you have a, um, a primary care physician where now you can self-refer yourself anywhere you wanna go under an EPO. Uh, Seventeen Slide 17 is the Blue Shield premium summary. And again, you could get a reduction in premium as long as you offered an HMO. And Blue Shield had given us two different options. And that's on 18. So again, I didn't, although we're, we're the consultant for PACE, um, PACE, everything that PACE does is determined by a PACE executive board. So we're the consultant, we do the underwriting and stuff, but we don't make the final decisions on what PACE is doing as far as what their plan designs are or um, who gets accepted into the um, pool and, and such. It's, it's very much run by our public agencies. Um, but even though we're the, the consultant on it, it doesn't mean I wouldn't look out for the best interest of the city because I'm also the city's consultant and just because I think PACE works for the city, we have to go out and look every now and then and see what else is available and see if it makes sense. And we do do that. Okay. 
Any questions on any of that? Okay. Um, on the dental renewal, uh, right now the city has a self-funded dental plan. And what we do um, in our underwriting department is we take a look at the claims, the administrative costs, and trend, and um, provide the city with rate equivalents. You know, basically we say this is what we would think that you need to um, charge in order to pay for the, the claims and the ASO fees. And so every year we um, provide that to the city. We'd do a 0% a margin, basically no buffer in there. This is what it would cost to do your um, pay your actual claims. And then a 3% gives you a little more of a buffer. And then, of course, a 5%, a little bit more than that. These are um, up to the city to determine if you want to adopt these or if you want to come somewhere in the middle or if you want to hold your rates. That's just up to you guys. Um, I'm kind of looking just quickly at this. Um, on that far left column where it says eligible class recommended premium equivalents, mm -hmm. it's got a list of all these employees, but it says total employees 66. According to my math in my head, that's 92. Is there? You're absolutely right. Okay. <laughs> Thank uh, you, and I apologize for that. No worries. I've seen these slides a <laughs> hundred times and didn't catch it. <laughs> I really am looking at this stuff, I promise. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry no about that. I apologize. Um, you see the bottom of here, it says an ASO fee, $7.25 per employee per month. That is built into the rate. And that's what Emeritus charges to pay the claims and for the use of the network. Okay. VSP and IMED um, is a rate pass this year. So we, we saw rate passes from most dental and vision um, carriers uh, due to the COVID. So it was nice to have that as a break. And then we have our um, principal life in AD and D. We did get a slight increase in the um, life rate, and and they wouldn't back it off, um, which I understand. So we got a rate of twenty point five percent, twenty and a half percent. And I asked if they we could have that rate and increase the life insurance amount to fifty thousand dollars, and principal held that rate for the increase to a fifty thousand dollar benefit. So it went from 20 grand to 50 grand, essentially? 20, no, your premium went to... No, not the premium, I'm saying the payout. Oh, yeah, you went from 20, to, you increased it $30,000. 30, mm-hmm. So, okay, yes. mm -hmm. Okay. And then we just have our rate, rate and benefit disclaimer because these are obviously not full benefit summaries or EOCs, have a sentence of coverage. And that is pretty much it. I have no questions. Um, my question is an Thank you very much. All right. So the reason Stacy was here this evening is because tonight on the regular agenda, you see several side letters and a resolution um, for to increase benefits for our staff. And I know that there have been questions from council and from the public about how we plan to fund that. And so one of the things that I want to mention this evening is that um, the dental plan is self-funded and over, I would say the last decade or longer, um, the city has gained a pretty substantial dental reserve. So we have about $160,000 sitting in a dental reserve that has kind of increased over time. So the recommendation is that we're going to hold our dental rates pat for the current year. There will be no increase to our employees to cover those premiums. Um, and that in the budget, I did budget for an approximate 5% increase um, in health insurance premiums, knowing that every year they do increase. We just don't know to what level. So whatever needs to be funded in order to do the sixteen twenty five dollars per employee that is above what I have budgeted will come from this dental reserve. Um, that's been vetted by legal. We've had our contracts reviewed. We've consulted with Keenan. Um, and so we've also gone to each of the individual bargaining units and asked them if that's how they would like to use that dental reserve and they all concur. So there is no increase to the general fund budget. Um, it will hold pat to what council has currently adopted, just to answer that question. Um, and I know that that is on the agenda for later this evening. So if there are no other questions, that's... I, I, I just have one to, yeah. to put it out there. So how much out of that, you said about a, approximately $160,000 reserve? Mm -hmm. How much of that's going to go, the difference between your 5% budgeted and actual? 
approximately sixty thousand dollars okay so there was a the increase for our premiums this year is roughly a hundred and thirty thousand um and i've budgeted for anywhere between sixty five and seventy thousand dollars of that and so the rest of that will come from okay. the dental reserves now we did have underwriting um go through the process of vetting our current reserve to see how long we thought that would last um we are completely safe to use $60,000 out of the dental reserves to cover those premiums. Um, and without saying too much, I, th I think there's a little room there for maybe even future years if, if the council at that time chooses. We didn't want to deplete it all in a single year. That doesn't make sense. We just don't know what our dental claims are going to do, but we definitely have some room there. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is this uh, PowerPoint going to be on the handout tomorrow? Yes, it will be posted with all of the other um, agenda items. I have no more questions. Ditto. Okay. Very Thank good. you. Hello. Thanks for oh, your Mayor. Hello. Yes, Eddie. Yes, Mayor. Okay. Hold on. Now, how much we got in reserves again? Approximately 160000 but that's the dental reserve. Is that a hundred? You know, I, I got a bad reception. Is that 150000 or 160000 in reserve? 160. Okay, one six zero in reserves. Correct. And what percentage you said five or six percent is we're gonna be two. what is it again? Because I'm glitching over here. Oh I'm sorry. So in the budget that council's already adopted, I budgeted for approximately a five percent increase. Um so anything above okay, five six, six, five per, five increase on what? On dental I mean I'm sorry, on health insurance premiums. So I brought a budget to council in June that assumed there was going to be an increase to health insurance benefits of approximately 5%. So the difference we're going to cover out of the dental reserve. Okay. Okay. So you'll get a 5% increase on the health insurance, right? Uh, health insurance premiums, right? No, the health insurance premiums have an eight and three quarter percent increase. What I'm saying is that we've eight. already budgeted for five percent of that. Oh, funded five percent of that. Correct. Right? And so the additional funding we need to pay for this increased premium is going to come from the dental reserves. So the general okay. fund will not be negatively impacted by this decision. It's an eight percent increase. Yeah, eight point seven five. Okay. So what is that one? What? That three percent? Approximately three and three quarter percent needs to be funded with the dental reserve. It's approximately uh, sixty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand dollars. Correct. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to get the, the numbers right. That's all. Okay. That's all. Any other questions? That's all I have. Okay. Well, we'll thank you. Thank you. Have no more questions. Thank you for your work. And uh, thank you, ma'am. We'll move on to uh, closed session. Our special meeting agenda. Uh, this item has been set aside by the city council meet in a closed session to discuss matters pursuant to government code section 54956.9D4. The city attorney will provide an oral report regarding the closed session at the beginning of the next regular city council meeting. Number one, government code section 54956.8, conference with real property negotiators, property APNs 024-052-0, Seven eight nineteen acres zero zero four dash zero eight zero dash zero one five and zero zero four dash zero nine zero dash zero zero three seventy three acres agency negotiator Nathan Olson city manager under negotiation price and terms number two government code section fifty four nine fifty six point nine conference with legal counsel, anticipated litigation, significant exposure to litigation pursuant to paragraph two or three of subdivision D of section 54956.9, one case. In the event that all items on the closed session agenda have not been deliberated in the time provided, the city council may continue to the closed session at the end of the regular scheduled council meeting. 
So without any further comment, we are in closed session. It is October 20, 2020. This is a 7.30 regular session. Please silence all electronic devices as a courtesy of those in attendance. Thank you. We are called to order. Invocation. Please rise. Let us pray. Lord, pray for the uh, repose of the soul of former City Council Linda Lah Lahodney. Her good works and civic achievements are too numerous to list, but will long be remembered. May she rest in peace. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Roll call. Councilmember Lyons. Here. Councilmember Scaldi. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Plord. Present. Mayor Neal. Thank you. We have a quorum. Do we have uh, any change? Uh, a closed session report? Nothing to report, Council. Do we have any changes to the agenda? Approvals, additions, or deletions? Not, not at this time. Not at this time. Okay, public comment. Public comment will be in accordance with the attached policy as listed on the website. And uh, City Clerk, do we have any public comment? Yes, I did receive one public comment, and it reads, um, in regards to the warrant register, is the city going to load the budget figures into the system so we can truly evaluate the budget standing as the year goes on? All the budgeted amounts say zero. Why are we still paying DirecTV when all the offices are closed? Why do we pay for bottled water for sparklets when the citizens are told we don't need an all alternate drinking water source? Why is everything dated 10-1-20 or 10-8-2020? Why aren't real invoice dates used? Thank you. Nancy Padijan, Lamore, California. Thank you. And as a general policy, we don't address public comments in the session. They have to be agendized, so. We'll move on to uh, ceremonial presentation section one. We have no ceremonial presentation. So department and city manager's report. And okay, we'll start out tonight with Michelle Steer, assistant city manager. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem and Council. I wanted to give you all an update on where we're at with our cannabis revenues, because I know that's something that everybody's been pure, pretty curious about. Um, we just completed our um, first quarter of the fiscal year. It ended at September 30th. And if you'll recall in the budget, we budgeted for about $200,000 in revenue raising fees, which is the um, revenue we received from cannabis dispensary operations. And to date, we have received 213,000. So in the first quarter, we've already exceeded our budgeted revenues. Thank you. Council, that's just the 5% the fee that's agreed upon in the, the agreement. So we will still get the additional 1% from regular sales tax with our quarterly earnings. So that's just the 5%. Up next is Chief Kendall. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem Plurid and council members. I want to provide you with an update in regards to our ongoing homicide investigation. As I updated last council uh, meeting, we were in the process of extraditing uh, one of the suspects from Texas. In uh, those two week time period, we were, uh, detectives were able to um, locate and track down the second suspect in Mexico, working with uh, DOJ and the US Marshals uh, they were able to uh, place him into custody, and he was extradited back into the U.S. today, and detectives uh, went down to L.A. to uh, pick him up, and they're currently transporting him to Kings County Jail right now. I also have uh, 
want to update you, we, we Captain Ochoa was successful in obtaining a grant to uh, to be used to offset the cost of our soft body armor. This grant will pay for half of the purchase price of each vest we need to replace this year. So that's a good thing. It'll pay for about half half our cost. And then uh, I just wanted to update you on the end of watch ride to remember. If you remember earlier this year, uh, this nonprofit organization uh, rode into town. They were making a cross country trip, visiting the 146 uh, agencies across the country that had lost an officer in the line of duty. Uh, during that time, um, the founder had reached out to us and spoke with Lieutenant Santos and uh, asked him to write a letter uh, describing Officer Diaz and his actions uh, the night he was killed. <clears throat> um, at the end of the ride, uh, they their board got together and um, reviewed all the letters from all the agencies and then selected our agency to be the recipient this year of a uh, police package, Harley Davidson, that we will uh, put to good use. So I just want to thank them, their support of law enforcement and uh, our department. And that's it. Awesome. Thank you very much. Hey, Chief, I have a question because someone asked me about that. So will, will that actually go into service and be seen throughout the city or will it be like on display for a, a while or? So my, my commitment to them, uh, they asked that same question and it's uh, up to each agency. Some agencies have elected to put it in their front lobby. Um, we're going to put it into service. So I want to see it out on the streets. I don't think it does any good uh, just sitting in our lobby yeah. or on display somewhere. So yes, right we'll use it. Cool. Uh -oh. well, Mr. Mayor, we're, we're doing the department head reports right now. So uh, okay. Uh, just uh, city manager. Yeah. Good evening again, <clears throat> mayor and council members. So I have just one update. Um, Sheila and Rex submitted and received a grant for the rec department of $177,000 to put shade structures uh -huh. in over on 19th Avenue at the uh, softball complex. That was one complex that met the demographics for the grant. So uh, we're actually got the bids. We should start construction on that within the next 30 days and have it completed by the end of the year and depending on if there's a couple of the funds left over we can we can add some incidentals to make sure we spend the full amount of the grant but there's zero dollar zero match it's a fully funded so 177 thousand worth of improvements going into the park thank you very good <coughs> okay uh, any questions before we move on Let's go on to the consent calendar, section three. Items considered routine in nature are placed on the consent calendar. They will be considered and voted upon in one vote as one item unless the council member or member of the public request individual consideration. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and read all of the consent calendar items and then I'll ask the council uh, if they'd like to pull any and then I'll ask the public. 3-1, approval minutes, regular meeting, October 6, 2020. 3-2, approval, resolution 2020-33, supporting Proposition 20, the Reducing Crime and Keeping California Safe Act. 3-3, approval, notice of completion, track number 920, Lanier Homes, phase one. 3-4, approval, real property lease agreement, Farm Lamore LLC. 3-5, <clears throat> approval real property lease agreement, Farm Lamore 2 LLC, and adoption of the mitigated negative declaration. 3-6, approval budget amendment, amending the lighting and landscape maintenance district and public facilities maintenance district, uh, adopted budget to coincide with the approved engineer's report. 3-7, approval, side letter number one between the City of Lemoore and General Association of Service Employees. 3-8, approval, side letter number one between the City of Lemoore and the City, or Lemoore Police Officers Association. 
3-9 approval side letter, letter number one between the city of Lemoore and the Lemoore Police Sergeant's Unit. 3-10 approval. approval. Three. Side letter. Three. 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 Three dash ten. Side letter number one between the city of Lemoore and the Lemoore Professional Services Bargaining Unit. Three dash eleven. Approval resolution twenty twenty dash thirty four. Adopting changes to benefits for the unrepresented employees of the city. Council members wish to pull anything. Negative. Any member of the public wish anything pulled? Yes. Items 3-4 and 3-7 through 3-11. Okay. We are going to... Gonna have Three. So what I'm looking for is a motion to approve... What I'm looking for... Whoever's, up, whoever's, whoever's appearing by phone, can you mute your line? Because we're getting really bad feedback. So what I need is a motion for an approval of consent calendar items 3-1, 3-2, 3-3, 3-5, and 3-6. So do I have a motion? I'd like to make a motion to approve 3-1, 3-2, 3-3, 3-6. Three, three, five, and three, three, five, and three, six. Motion from Council Member Scaldi. Second. Council Member um, Lyons. Is there any discussion on the motion? No. Okay. Hearing none. Uh, Council Member Scaldi. Aye. Council Member Lyons. Aye. Mayor Neal. Aye. And I vote aye. Council, the uh, consent calendar is approved with the exception of 3-4, 3-7 through 11. Okay, the first item up for discussion is 3-4, approval real property lease agreement, Farm Lamore LLC. This uh, is, I guess the city manager? Yeah, so I'm not sure why it was pulled. Did they have a question? Yeah, so I have a comment from the public and it reads, on this agenda, agenda item for leasing farmland for the cultivation of cannabis products, the only item listed as a con was public perception. Considering agricultural theft is already a problem for regular crops and equipment, was a potential increase in agricultural crimes and plant theft already considered? I apologize if this has already been discussed. I just didn't see it mentioned on the agenda item. Thank you, Nancy. Patajon. So, Mayor and Council Members, yeah, again, this is in the project development agreement. The terms were laid out that when this is developed, and, and this site here, the 12 acres, they'll have the right to lease it. They still have to submit a minor site plan to go through the Planning Commission and everything, but it will be required to have the security fence, the razor wire, the lighting and appropriate security system. So, yes, we did take that into account. I think that addresses her concern. <clears throat> so, uh, are there any other questions from the council? No, I have none. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm getting a, I'm getting a lot of feedback. I, I can't hear. I'm I'm hearing a lot of conversation. We'll reposition the microphone. Okay, can you guys hear me now? Yeah, yeah we can hear you fine, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Do you have any or comments on 3-4? Absolutely not. Okay, and then I'll entertain a motion uh, for approval of 3-4. Make a motion to approve 3-4. Council Member Scaldi. And Second. Set, and, Counts, and Mayor Pro Tem, or Mayor Neal, thank you. Um, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, Council Member Scaldi. Aye. Mayor Neal. Here, aye. Councilmember Lyons. Aye. And I vote aye. The uh, council member, the uh, consent calendar item 3-4 is approved. Next, 3-7 uh, <clears throat> through 3-11 deals with uh, 
our uh, side letter number one, since they all generally deal with the same area, we're going to vote on them uh, collectively. So what is the comment from the public on that? The comment reads, I have a few questions that I didn't see answered on the agenda item. How much is the fiscal impact of agreeing to pay this increase? What is the current benefit rate per employee? Is the city absorbing the entire 8.75% increase? If we are already operating in a deficit, why would we make the situation even worse by absorbing more costs? Or was this already in the 2021 budget? Nancy Padjohn. Okay, I guess, uh, do you get up? Did you, uh, Michelle Spear is jumping up to answer all four of those questions, so. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, so the 8.75% increase to health insurance premiums is approximately a $128,000 increase. Um, the city budgets for a cap. So currently we fund about $1,475 a month per employee. And the recommendation is to move that cap to $1,625. That does not equate to a, a precise 8.75% increase. It just depends on which benefit package the employee chooses. But generally speaking, yes, the city is going to fund the majority of that increase. When council adopted the budget in June of um, 2020, it included an approximate four and a half to five percent of that increase um, that was built into the budget you've already adopted. The remaining sixty thousand dollars or thereabout is going to be covered through the dental reserves that the city currently has. We have dental reserves through previous premium collections that we can use to help offset this cost. It currently has a reserve fund balance of about one hundred and sixty thousand dollars, and we're proposing to use sixty of it to fund this. So, generally speaking, I know that the public mentioned the deficit. This is not going to increase the general fund deficit because these monies are monies that we will be using to offset general fund negative impacts. Okay. Um, plus, you did get agreements from all the bargaining units on, on the side letter. Correct. So we met with the health insurance committee, which has two members um, from every single bargaining unit. Their members have already agreed tentatively pending your approval. Um, they also are aware of the fact that we are proposing to use the dental reserves to help cover this cost. They needed to agree to that and they have. Okay. Any other public comment on the public comment? <laughs> no? Nobody? Okay. Any comments from the city council? Negative. Mr. Mayor? No comment. Okay, so I'll... We'll oh, no, I, I, I don't have comment. Okay. Uh, motion? <clears throat> motion approve uh, 3-7 uh, through 3-11. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, Council Member Scaldi and uh, second by Mayor Neal. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Council Member Scaldi. Aye. Council Member uh, Mayor Neal. Aye. Council Member Lyons. Aye. And I vote aye. The uh, consent calendar items 3 7 through 3 11 are approved. Thank Next you. item on the agenda is a public hearing, section 4, 4-1, public hearing resolution 2020-35, <clears throat> proceeding with the abatement process for the property located at 351 Heinlein, 311E, or E Street, APN 020-054-007-000. Good evening, Mayor and, Mayor and Council Members. At the September 1st, uh, 2020 Council Meeting, Council passed Resolution 2020-30, which declared 341 Heinlein and 311 E Street, which is one building, a public nuisance due to a public safety hazard. The city has received the city has received calls regarding the alley being closed, which has inconvenienced some businesses business owners and makes picking up uh, uh, containers a little more more work for um, city employees. The reason for the alley being closed is, is due to a temporary brace, which is holding up the structure. Um, so until the structure can be removed, the alley will be remain will remain closed. Um, I think in your your packet you re, or in your uh, on your desktop you have a couple of pictures. Uh, just just 
One is, uh, I'm not sure which one you have in front of you, but, oh, that, that's the interior. So what we believe occurred is that um, the roof had a, a leak for several years. And so it affected the structure below and also the wall. And so once the wall gave out, it actually severed four of those trusses, which when that fell, it pushed the exterior wall out. Uh, and then the other picture is actually a view from the alley, um, which kind of shows the bracing that is being used to support the wall. Um, so we've been, I've been working with the owner, um, which uh, Sherry Hospital, which is she's the daughter of the owners, the Lewis family. They've been quite cooperative. Um, they start off with the bracing and then we had concerns about um, uh, pedestrians walking around it. So we called, contacted her and they put up a fence, which, you know, made it safe. Um, uh, she's kind of kept me posted on what's been happening. Um, they, but what's happened is they met a roadblock with their insurance company and are asking uh, for more time. Um, so Sherry is, is listening. Uh, there's a letter that I think uh, Sherry would like uh, city clerk to read. And then she's actually on line to answer any questions that, that uh, anyone may have regarding uh, the, uh, the circumstance. When you open the public hearing. Well, uh, the property owners and the city are working together to, to resolve the issue then? Yes. And the, the holdup is the insurance company? Yes, it is. So uh, is there any public comment on this agenda item? I, I would like to hear the, the letter. Okay, let's hear the letter first. And so I recommend you open the public hearing oh. first so it can be part of the hearing record. Okay, my okay. apologies. That sounds reasonable and legal. <laughs> we are open to public hearing right now. Uh, right. Let's... Uh, uh, City Clerk, would you read the letter from? Yes. Okay. So it reads, my dad, Manuel Lewis, and our family have occupied the building on the corner of Heinlein and East Street for 46 years. We started out renting from Art Durad for 19 years, and we have owned the building for the last 27 years. On Monday, May 4th, 2020, we discovered an interior wall had come down. We immediately made the building safe and began working with our insurance company to re reach a resolution on a claim. Despite maintaining insurance on the property for all 46 years, including the last seven with the current insurer, our claim has thus far been denied. We are working with lawyers and public adjusters to, to resolve the insurance matter. We are working diligently to resolve this matter and we are not leaving any stone unturned. We are asking the city for patience while we work through this process. We request 60 days to try to resolve the issue. And at that time, we will come back to the council with an update and a path to resolution. Sherry Hospital, Doris Lewis, and Ron Lewis. Thank you. Okay. Uh, does anybody, anybody in the room wish to make a comment? And uh, or someone on the line is. Do we have someone on the line that would like to comment? Nathan, do you have the property? No, I I believe the. I don't, I don't know. Not me. There's somebody is, else. On is the there line. is there somebody else on the line that called in for this item regarding the abatement of this building? Oh, okay. If so, please unmute yourself if you'd like to talk. If not, we'll just continue on. Okay, so uh, Sherry is on the phone. If you have any questions for her, she sh Sherry should be on the. Well, I think she hung up. Did know. she hang up? I'm not sure. I just asked if anybody was on. They didn't say anything. Okay. Yeah. So can, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. So, um, so just to make clear to you, when I met with uh, Sherry uh, yesterday, they had the understanding that the city was going to require them to bring the entire building up to code. At no point did we ever say that. All we were asking is that the building may be brought to, you know, structural stability 
and that's safe to occupy. So I made that clear to her. So I think that probably opened a different avenue for her. They were thinking of having to demo the building. And so now they may just need time to, you know, get a hold of a, you know, an engineer, contractor, kind of figure <coughs> out what's going to cost to to repair the building, the structure, which is an interior wall, exterior wall, the roof structure in a in a center, um, in the center of the building would have to come down and be rebuilt. And then the electrical is shut off to the building because it a wall fell fell over that was holding all the, the panels up. And so there is no power to the structure right now. So no one's in the building. Um, they just have storage up front, um, but no one else is in the, in the building currently. Um, well then, uh, I need to close the public yeah. hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Since there's no more comments, I might add that sometimes, uh, an abatement process helps the insurance company make some make a decision so this is not going to hurt the, the property owner if we start the abatement process at least that's my feeling on it i, I have a question and a comment if i could yeah. my question would be um for mr rivera is it possible to put like plating on the exterior <clears throat> and come through to mount to hold this well up from the inside so we could get alley access back open because it is hindering traffic there is that even a possibility was we wait 60 days or whatever to get to resolution and then i would the comment would be if we wanted to allow more time on this we could actually table this item for like 60 days or uh an, another date in the future that'll prevent us from having to re-notice the hearings and all that to bring it back so just a thought uh just my opinion due to the age of the brick uh, we would need a structure engineer to probably evaluate whether you could shore it up i know um my what might happen is maybe to get an engineer to determine if the wall can be removed and maybe the roof taken down just to kind of make it safe so nothing falls down and then maybe they can just ply with the opening and then open open up the alley and of course when they probably build the wall back they'll probably have to keep the alley closed while they're building it up back back by brick or whatever structure or material they they want to use but um but yeah, that that's a possibility. But I think an engineer needs to determine that, and then. But I think the, I mean, either other than, you know, there's I, I don't believe there's any asbestos on the brick, so I mean they could probably get clearance through the air board, and, you know, fairly easy. Uh, now the roof might be a different question, you know. So. Okay. But. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, they've been working hand in hand with the city. They've been pretty upfront and everything like that. Yes. And how much of a hindrance? Um, you said there was a hindrance to some businesses, obviously to pick up refuse. Yeah, we, we received calls. Uh, you know, some business owners are 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 being inconvenienced. Um, their uh, refuse has had to relocate the trash dumpster to the other side of the alley to accommodate some of the business owners. Um, and yeah, just the fence around it just kind of, you know, it's a, it's a trap for like paper and debris. And so, it you know, you just has become so it becomes kind of an attractive nuisance but but i i have not heard any complaints you know probably in about a month but we did receive several complaints right at the beginning at back, back in may. may yep right now the the uh area is safe because it's uh, fenced off and the building doesn't appear to be uh, shifting ready to fall down because it's got all kinds of pipes and structures keeping the wall from moving i believe the inspectors when they met um the owners out there initially they had an engineer give them a design for that for that temporary brace structure there so okay yeah so uh would uh, <clears throat> if we table this for 45 to 60 days would that uh, help the property owner try to resolve this we i believe it would well, uh, 60 days then? Uh, I'm in favor of 60 days. Um, so to avoid having to pay to re-notice it, you would, need to pick, you would need to pick a specific date that you're going to continue it to. Okay. Well. Um, your second meeting in December is December 15th, and your first meeting in January is the 5th. Is January 5th. I, I would move to go to December 15th. In my humble opinion, it gives them almost 60 days. 
approximately 52. I, uh, seven. I think the 15th of December, uh, uh, Council Member Lyons. Yeah, agreed. And uh, Mayor Neal. Yeah. So uh, you would you would need an actual motion to table with a second? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to table this action until the December 15th City Council meeting. And I second. And second by Mayor Neal. Okay, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, uh, Council Member Scaldi. Aye. Mayor Neal. Aye. Council Member Lyons. Aye. And I vote aye. It is tabled till 15 December. Thank you. And good Thank luck. Uh, I, I wish the property owners well. The next item, uh, oh, by the way, when we bring it back uh, on the 15th of December, we have already had the public hearing, so Correct. we'll just go in any public comment then. Correct. And hopefully it'll be resolved by then. Okay, new business section five, five dash one, discussion and direction, downtown merchants advisory council. City manager Wilson. So good evening, Mayor and Council Members once again. So yeah, on this item we brought this um, previously and we had direction to go back talk to the the DMA. We were gonna attend the next meeting and kind of get some more feedback exactly what ordinance change they wanted and what kind of more control or more authority they wanted. Um, but that meeting was canceled again to due to a lack of a quorum. So um, we're bringing it back now for discussion, but I, I do believe that we can find a more efficient way to help support our downtown. Um, so the cities, we're asking staff to give us direction uh, multiple things. One, just keep it as is and continue on or maybe shorten the meetings, don't have as many meetings every month or one a quarter, something of that nature. So um, this is really for direction. Do you want us to keep the the, the DMA intact? Um, staff would like to see it um, disband at this time due to just lack of activities. And then if, if that's the direction that council wishes to go we have a couple options for what we'd like to do for the collection of the funds that are there because as i'll repeat it i'm sure you know but some people may not know we collect a double tax in a certain area of downtown businesses so we collect the tax the city gets their share and then that secondary tax goes into the account for the pbia for the downtown merchants and they use it for events and planning and upkeep of the downtown area um, they're all subject to brown act rules any spending has to come to council for approval. So it's cumbersome to spend that money. So what we're wondering, um, we have the money in an account, we keep it separate um, in a PBI account. So the, the city can continue to collect the tax and enter into an agreement with a nonprofit regarding downtown services and issue the funds at regular intervals for use by the nonprofit at their discretion, or the city can cease collection of the funds altogether and the downtown merchants can form their own nonprofit if they choose and collect funds of their own. Um, I think this was tried in the past and that's kind of how we got to a downtown merchants because it wasn't working. They didn't get a lot of voluntary compliance. Or then the third option is the city could continue to collect the funds and keep as committed revenues, the restricted revenues that can only be used for basically downtown promotional activities, beautification, banners, event planning, things of that nature. And then we would just basically use those funds, set them aside, and they'd be used by city staff to go down and take care of that. So if, uh, if we did disband it and we did uh, get a group of downtown merchants that would like to have money spent, they could spend it the city could spend it through the use of those funds. Yes, we, wouldn't, we yes. wouldn't have to give that to those people. We would spend it on their behalf. Yes, we'd have to. We'd have to come up with how we'd want to do that. But but yeah, I, I I don't have the exact amount that's in that fund right now. But there's there's some decent money. There's definitely enough to do some cleaning up and some planning of planners and things like so that. This is going to require a, a, another agenda item in the future for the municipal code to change the municipal code. Mm -hmm. Correct, you need an ordinance yeah. amendment. And I'll need direction on how we wanna handle the existing funds and current funds so we can put together a operational plan for that. Okay. And uh, 
my personal choice would be to not not do away with the the second it's basically a second making the the downtown merchants basically and uh let the city manage it a little opposed to that so basically you're asking them and then you're not giving them the way to spend it the way they currently have I still like the idea of having them have a body to choose how they spend it. I kind of like the way Ms. Rolson is nonprofit that would eliminate them from having to follow Brown Act rules, which would make, make things a lot easier. I, I don't know how to get there. That idea a little bit better than taxing them and then not letting them have a say in negotiation effectively doesn't exist because they don't attend meetings well and i think partially due to the fact that they don't attend the meetings is because they have to be agendized and you know they have a bunch of rules that they have to follow I'm, <laughs> i feel bad saying that you know eliminating those rules will get more participation but it may yeah eliminating the rules will get the city in trouble though, so. <laughs> that's, that's why the brown act is is brown yeah you know I, I, I understand. I, I, I'm kind of at a cross. I don't know. Crossroads? No. The, the funds collected would be used for the downtown. It could be for necessities just for the downtown, which won't, wouldn't need necessarily to have uh, a group from the downtown merchants uh, approval to have it happen. It could be a request from any citizen if it's money that's going to be used for downtown as far as i'm concerned no. we're, we're open for direction i mean i just i i too agree i would hate to get rid of the that collection stuff that's kind of what they use it from um we had a pretty well attended event this last downtown so you know we can use some of these funds to help advertise events like that for local businesses so have, have any of the dma members been contacted about this or asked or what's their opinion or i'm gonna have to defer to miss judy howell on that one the only communication that i've received is from jeff garcia he is one of the committee members and he wanted to make sure that the letter got to you he is asking for additional authority for to, to come to to request things of downtown. That's the only communication that I've received since this item has come forward. And you've been a part of the DMA for? Since 2002, when I came to work here, I was assigned to be the liaison to that committee. And it, it didn't used to function as a Brown Act advisory committee. It was a, a much more casual committee to where the group um, they met on their own times and um, always always showed up unless they had a reason why they couldn't be there but um, there were they were very committed to the group and I, I haven't been able to locate any documentation but I truly believe that there was a downtown merchants association and a downtown merchants advisory committee because there was a checking account that said Downtown Merchants Association. And I believe if something like that was brought forward, if, if they created that committee again or that, that association and became a nonprofit, that could be the way how to use the funds that are collected. I think that was how this was initially formed. So personally as staff, I'd like to see it done that way again I think that there would be a lot more people that would be interested in participating on that um, association in the association to use those funds that way without having to come <coughs> forward and be um, at a, a meeting with all of the Brown Act rules that's when participation really started falling off um, and I and I received some people that some businesses that said they're afraid to really speak their minds when in the meetings because everything's being recorded for a while they were being the audio was being recorded 
and then they would get pushback from community or people wouldn't participate in their their businesses anymore. So I, I think that has really hurt the committee. Do you see them have becoming a uh, nonprofit? Do you see any negative? I don't see a negative with that. I don't know if there are people interested in doing that. I, I would guess that they would be more interested in that than in the, the advisory committee. I remember some time ago we dropped the number of a tenth of members. Yes. I think it's five now or something like There's that. There's five. Yes. And you don't it even was, have five was, anymore, Ryan. Was nine. nine. Well, it was nine. We went to five to try to, we could never achieve a quorum. So we thought if we lowered the uh, number that three could give us a quorum and still not working. And by turning it into a nonprofit, you think you'll have more participation, yes? I don't think we wouldn't turn it into a nonprofit. They would have to they would have to they would have to do that. They would have to form their own committee or not committee, but association, Advisory whatever committee, yeah. it is that they form and they would have to do it, but I would think that they would be more inclined to participate in, in that. Okay, well, I like that idea. Yeah, it sounds better. Now, if would we be transferring money to a nonprofit, or would we be getting inputs from the nonprofit on where to spend the money? That's the question. In, until there's a nonprofit, we wouldn't be able to funnel it to a nonprofit. So I would imagine in the meantime, if there's needs in the downtown area, like the planter boxes that need to be improved, maybe some of them funds could be approved to be spent there. So we we're only asking this nonprofit to supply inputs then they don't even need to be a nonprofit they just have to be a downtown group correct because we're not giving correct. them money they don't they don't necessarily have to have a, a tax id number uh, yeah, the, we're not funneling money to them the, the other thing that i was kind of in the back of my head and i'll just bring it up but is if People are so savvy to social media now. If there's a way we could just get like the downtown merchants, like uh, an email for downtown merchants, and maybe if a for an improvement or to do something downtown, that we have the like the group email. Maybe we could just do like a quick survey monkey. Hey, this was brought up. This is what they'd like to do. Do you approve of this? Yes or no? And just take a you know like a general election of fifty plus one. If, if they say, then then we go ahead and spend that money. That way you're not worrying about nonprofits. It kind of gives the community input that uses the downtown. It gives the business owners some input. And maybe that could be a short-term solution until we figure, figure out, I don't know. Like I said, we're open to, to any ideas, but I think it is cumbersome. So we got to find a way to make it easy to, to bring ideas forth and put in a, to get it, to get things done. I just wanted to speak real quick to the finances. So because the city is collecting the double tax, those are considered city funds. And ultimately, council has discretion on how those funds get used, which is why the DMA is currently an advisory committee. They only provide recommendations to council. So by virtue of the fact that we're collecting the funds, you all have control of how that gets used. That's why every year when we do the budget, Fund 85 comes to you for its own budget. Right now, the DMA is earning about nine to $10,000 a year in that double tax, and that's how much money you have at your discretion. So until such time that there is another entity to, to transfer, I use that term loosely, transfer those funds to through some sort of agreement, those are always city funds that council will direct the use of. At the time, if there is, in some point in the future, a nonprofit that is organized for this purpose, the city would then enter into an agreement with that nonprofit, and the agreement would stipulate what those funds could be used for. So we would then issue a check quarterly or annually or whatever we do to the nonprofit, but they would be required to use it for specific functions outlined in the MOU. If the city manager's idea of creating some sort of um, informal group was to occur, they would still be city funds, but you could commit those funds. They're not technically restricted because it's not a law, it's a local ordinance, but you could commit those funds for a very specific purpose as outlined in any sort of agreement that you would have with this 
informal group or through an ordinance or a resolution. You could say via resolution that any funds that are collected during this for this double tax are to be used for a very specific set of purposes, which means even though they live in the general fund, we can only use them for that task. And you could go to this informal group and ask their opinions on how they'd like those funds to be used. I don't know if I really if I just muddied that up for you. <laughs> Ultimately, it is your choice how those funds get used. It's just future agreements would stipulate specifics. Well, <clears throat> do do I have? Uh, is there a council member that does not want to see the DMA go away? Yeah. As 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 an advisory committee of the city of Lemoore, which requires the Brown Act and record records of, records of their activities and things, you you want to keep the DMA, or would you like to see it go? No, away? I'd like I, to see it change. Yeah, okay. I, I'd, I'd like to be, but, let it become a little bit more user friendly. So yes. away from the city's uh, heavy hand. Basically. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a motion that. Uh, Can you check with the public, see if there's any public comments on this item? I did. Oh, okay. I think we've been having public comments. Okay. I just didn't know if Marissa you, had any. Okay. I thought I did. I'm sorry if I missed it. I'll ask one more time because I'm. <laughs> does anybody wish to make another public comment? <laughs> Seeing none, I will make a motion to. Dissolve the Downtown Merchants Association to amend this, the municipal code to uh, reflect that, to keep the second tax to be used for purposes of downtown beautification or whatever is needed for downtown, and to accept inputs from the public for what those that second tax would be used for. Is that pretty much comprehensive? From an advisory committee though, or no? It's up to the, the it's up to uh, the public to provide their own public uh, group. So you're gonna have public input on how those funds are going to possibly be right. used. Not just the downtown no. businesses, I don't wanna call it the DMA anymore downtown businesses would well, also have input. I, yeah, I think the downtown merchants uh, are going to supply inputs for the downtown. We could live in it to the downtown, though. No. They're the ones that are What's the question? So, so we're just talking about how we go about taking this motion to put a rally. So whatever you motion tonight, we'll have to come back at a future date with the ordinance change and then we'll have to figure out the specifics on what the monies can be used for, whether that becomes part of the ordinance or a resolution, but I think we just probably write it into the ordinance. So this is a, I think this is a good start to get us moving in, in the right direction. Right, and you don't necessarily need a motion this evening. It can just be consensus right. if you prefer. Okay, would you like me to repeat what I just said? Yes, please. Okay, but I, I would like to make a, well, I would like to, let, like it to be um, that we dissolve the Downtown Merchants Association. We keep the we keep the second tax for purposes for use downtown. We modify the municipal code reflecting that the downtown merchants have gone away, and um, the city will use inputs from the downtown for what those funds would be used for. From, from possibly some type of board, advisory board. And a, I'll go ahead and recommend that uh, the public form, the downtown merchants find, form their own um, group, unofficial from the city. Okay, well, that pretty clear? That was pretty clear. So what are we gonna see in 30 days or 60 days? Clear as mud. <laughs> um, well, if there's consensus, we would bring back an ordinance revision. Those have to be noticed, and then we'd have to do the introduction. So it take right, a while. First read, yeah. It'll, and then so after the second reading, it's 30 days until it becomes. 
in effect. Yes. Okay. So, uh, Mayor Neal, do you have any input? Hearing none. Any other discussion on it? No. Okay. So, uh, no other discussion. Then we'll we'll move on to uh, five two report recommendation and action. Project development agreement and cannabis regulatory permit between the city of Lamar and People's Farm LLC for cannabis cultivation and consideration of two lease purchase option agreements with city property, uh, with city property to People's Properties LLC. Good evening again. So, <clears throat> People's has inquired about multiple spots in Lemoore to do some cannabis cultivation for biomass. One of those sites is the North Wellfield, um, which is included in the staff report and in the PDA. What we're asking tonight, though, is that um, we're asking council to approve a 18.99 acre lease that is in town in the light industrial for some biomass and some outbuildings for processing and manufacturing that'll come back through the planning commission at a later date with site plan reviews. Um, and the approval of their <clears throat> project development agreement only after modifications have been made to it to stricken anything related to the North Wellfield. So at this time, we're pulling the North Wellfield out of the project development agreement and out of the lease. So the only thing we're asking council to vote tonight would be to approve the lease on the 19 acres of property that is south of the wastewater plant. Um, to people's farms and approval of the project development agreement to only include the 19 acres in town. Any mention of leasing or the project development for the north field that was originally discussed will be excluded from the, the voting tonight and the agreement. So it's just the property on Vine in the city, not the acreage out north of town? Correct. So we'll make sure legal scrubs the document and that there is no mention of of the north wellfield or the apns on the north wellfield um, okay i will also say that as part of this lease they have a lease option to purchase at a predetermined amount of thirty thousand dollars an acre for that piece of land you have projected income uh, for the 72 acres of uh, one million four hundred thousand and 570,000 for the 19 acres. Yeah, if, if they were to purchase it, that would be the purchase price. So they're gonna lease it currently for $2,000 um, $2, an acre. So the lease price will be uh, $38,000 38, on that piece of property the first year. A lot better than $1 an acre. Yes, sir. I like it. Okay, uh, I'm gonna open it up for public comment unless you have some questions. Mayor Neal, do you have any questions? No. Okay, public comment. Uh, the city clerk has no public comment. Uh, anybody in the room wish to address this item? Seeing none or hearing none, uh, does anybody wish to make a motion? And please let the motion include eliminating any verbiage about the well field. Okay, I would like to make a motion that we accept um, the PDA for the acreage in town um, and not include the acreage north of town at the well field to be approved. And does that also include the lease approval for that as well? The lease approval for the acreage in town, yes, it does. Second. All right. Uh, a motion from Councilmember Scaldi, a second from Councilmember Lyons. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, Councilmember Scaldi. Aye. Councilmember Lyons. Aye. Mayor Neal. Aye. And I vote aye. Aye. All right. The motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Three dash or five dash three discussion and direction progress report for the proposed Lacey Ranch 158 acre development project outside the city urban growth boundary and 
concurrence on request of speed for spear of influence amendment <coughs> Excuse me. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Steve Brandt, City Planner. Um, the uh, proposed Lacey Ranch residential project, um, it's been about a year since we last um, talked about this at the Council. Um, this is a project that the staff has been working with the developer and their uh, consultants um, in the in the past over the past year. Um, one of the issues that um, we're working with is that the besides the council approval that would be needed eventually on the project, uh, LAFCO would need to approve a sphere of influence amendment to Lemoore's sphere of influence, as well as annexation of the property. So we've been having some discussions with them and um, trying to avoid having it trigger a larger review of our entire sphere of influence so um, what we're going to be proposing is to recognize the fact that uh, a few years ago there was some land that was originally proposed for development west of West Hills College. That land has now been taken out of uh, development potential because there's a, there's a conservation easement on it. So in discussing that with with LAFCO, I think what we're going to propose to them is that we're, we're kind of swapping some land, taking some land out of out of development potential in exchange for this. And um, it seems like, I mean, they're not gonna give us an approval, a pre-approval, but it seems like a strategy that, that's gonna work. We just wanted to bring that for you, make sure you are aware of that. Um, and then also just let you know that the, the EIR is uh, in process right now, it's being written, we're starting the process, we had had a, we started a public review process. We had a meeting uh, before one of the planning commission meetings to get any comments from the public. And um, so that process is happening. So the, the project's moving forward. We wanted to bring this before you um, just to let you know what we're doing. And then in case you wanted to give us any direction to shift how we're doing things, um, this would be a chance to do it. Otherwise, we'll just keep moving forward. So generally speaking, do you think this is going to go through with, uh, without any uh, difficulty, or are we going to? Oh, talk I've done a lot of land development projects. I don't make predictions like that. Okay. I will. I will tell you, we have, we have not run into any major issues so far. We're nowhere near the flight path, right? We're not over no. the flight path. We are far away from where the Navy cares about. Good. Yes. Well, we're not talking about years of litigation and trying not to. Not right through. now, we're not. Good. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, LAFCO is, you know, I was on LAFCO at one time, and it, it, it seemed to me that that we tried to coexist with the cities, you know, work together, make sure the water and sewer and everything was taken care of before it was annexed and, and things. So. Uh, and um, we just have to let the process work. And we have a good relationship with, with LAFCO staff, so I, I, I feel pretty good about that process. So, um, I, 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 I guess the only direction I would offer is to keep on doing what you're doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. I don't think we need any you know, let the experts do their thing. How's that? Amen. If I'm allowed to say it. They're, they're not asked. We're not asking for a motion or anything. Correct. Just, no. that, just general it. direction. I sounds. would. I, my, my thought is that. Uh, Mayor Neal, do you have any thoughts on this? No. Not at all. Okay. Good work. Not at all. Good all right. work. And Keep I hope, going. I, I'm, I'm anxious to see buildings out there some, sometime in the future. Yes. Did you want to see if the public had any comments on this? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see if the public has any comments on this. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Did did the city clerk get any comments? Does anybody in, in the room wish to comment on this? All right. Well, then uh, the city has direction, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get some action from the county, and this will soon be annexed.
Okay, that uh, concludes City Council reports and requests. Uh, City Council reports and requests. Uh, Council Member Lyon. Um, is this the brief one? Yeah, okay. You just didn't say it today. <laughs> Uh, I just want to congratulate the Lemoore Police Department for the In the Watch Memorial bike. That's that's pretty neat. Then thank Sergeant was it Santos, the Lieutenant Lieutenant Santos. Oh man, I demoted him. Sorry, Lieutenant Santos. But uh, <laughs> thank him for you know his his letter. And also, I want to give a thanks to Sheila Sheila Taylor. Correct? Uh -huh. Are you looking at my notes? No, I'm not looking at your notes. I want to thank, and because there is a little bit of uh, misunderstanding there from some people that the fact that we've been brought up and we're talking about the Christmas parade and how there, you know some people may have thought that we didn't have confidence in our city staff, and which wasn't the case. And I'm I'm going to blame my lawyer because that's her job. And all we <laughs> wanted to do was have a conversation about it. It had some questions, and she's like, "Oh, you can't talk about it without doing an agenda item," and so. That's how it got put on the agenda. So we were just trying to, you know, keep everybody happy, and we weren't trying to, you know, not have confidence in. But Sheila is a very good staff person. She's great. She really is. I have all the confidence. I'm looking forward to a backwards parade all of a sudden. Heck, I think I think we're gonna do everything backwards from now on. Um, and that goes for all the city staff. Everybody, you know, it's a difficult times. It's continues to be. I know, I'm trying to be brief. And uh, everybody's doing a good job, especially the fire department. I'm done. <laughs> Council Member Scaldi. Uh, like I said, I think Council Member Lyons is looking at my notes, but I, I would like to congratulate both uh, PD and Rec for securing the grants to, to help out. It's always great when you get free stuff. Um, you know, obviously, here in a couple of weeks, we're about ready to vote. Some of you guys probably have already voted. Um, if you haven't, go out and do so. Um, it's kind of difficult to sit up here on the city council and and not run and, and have people complain about all this stuff and ooh, throwing all these, you know, complaints out there, yet they're sitting at home doing what they want to do, not being proactive, but they'll sit behind a computer screen or talk to their neighbor, talk at the barbershop or wherever the hell it might be. And, uh, you know, if, if you're one of two things. You're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution. Okay. And then I'm not saying anybody's a problem, but I'm saying like <laughs> everybody can be a solution. Um, I, I've been a, a council member for not that long. It's been about 14 months. And in that time, I probably had 12 people that have emailed me about certain stuff. And, um, you know, I know it's supposed to be brief, but people haven't reached out to me complaining and stuff, but I'll hear it. I have no social media, but I hear it from other people. Um, constituents will come up and say, hey, what's going on with this? I'm hearing this. And I'm like, they've never talked to me. So, again, go out and vote. Um, put the person who you think is best to sit here and here and here and there into office. That simple. Have a safe Halloween. Oh, and thanks, PD, for taking care of uh, getting the guy in Texas and getting the guy in Mexico. That's that's awesome to, to be able to find him in, in such a distant location. Great job. Okay, before I pass it on to Mayor Neal, my comments are uh, I want to thank the, the members of the DA, DMA, past and future, or past and present. Uh, those people, you know, it's not an easy job to, to, to do... Uh, or make recommendations when they get picked on by their their fellow uh, business owners. So I can understand where uh, they don't want to be recorded or they don't want to use the Brown Act or you know they don't want to attend a meeting. But the end result is now it's going to have to be reorganized. But for those people that were were on the committee, I want to thank them for their service and. Uh, Wish them well, and I hope they per keep participating in the future in some form. The next item is uh, I was on the policy committee for the South Fork Kings groundwater uh, sustainability. sustainability agency uh, last week, 
and uh, they had uh, a comment uh, referring to Nathan Olson with the quality of the water reports that they were received. So I want to pass on a well done for you because your your name was the only one uh, mentioned on getting the water reports in and quality. So I, I can't take credit for that. I got to give that to public works group. <laughs> I asked for the information they produce it. So well, team well, effort though, but thank you. We'll pass that along. Pass that on. Okay. Um, the uh, next item is deals with the, uh, the League of California Cities annual conference. We sent uh, a representative or had a representative to vote on the one item that dealt with the Communications Decency Act. And I wanted to find out uh, what the league had uh, voted on. Uh, so Mayor Neal, uh, I'm gonna conclude my, my comments. And if you know what the answer to that question is, uh, please address it. Mayor Neal, public, your, yeah. your, your report. I, I feel that everything went good, successful. I don't have nothing to say or come back with, but you know, God bless you guys all. I think it was a good, a good report and good council meeting. Did the uh, did the League of California Cities vote on the Communications Decency Act amendment? Yeah. And what was that approved? Was everything that went, everything was approved? Well, I was the only no vote in this council, so at least yeah, it was approved. Thank you. Uh, do you have any? Right, thank you. Do you have any other item? Absolutely not. Okay, before I before I close the meeting, I want to congratulate the mayor for for his new marriage. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. And also uh, ask everybody to keep in their prayer uh, Linda Lahotney. She's going to be missed. So with that, our, we are adjourned until. November the 3rd. Don't forget to vote.